Okay, so welcome to Taylor Hobson Optics Series of Optics Seminars. Um, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Neil Fitzgibbon. I'm the Optics Metrology Business Development Manager at Taylor Hobson. Today, I'd like to introduce to you Dr. Yang Yu. She's the Senior Applications Engineer for Optics Metrology at Taylor Hobson. She's been with us for 15 years. She has lots of experience and she's worked in various different disciplines from white light into pharmacy interferometry through to uh, contact metrology and with the loop for scan non-contact metrology as well. OK, so during this webinar, Dr. Yang will be talking about cutting edge measurement techniques for Fresnel optics. So I'm sure there'll be stuff in here that you find interesting and, uh, and exciting. If you have any questions, feel please feel free to ask them. Um, if you go, if you ask your questions in the question and answer panel, um, and then we will actually answer the questions at the end of the meeting or of the webinar. Sorry. OK, so I'll just transfer Yang over to you and then we can get started. OK, Yang, we're good oh. to go. Oh, hello. Is it ready? Okay. Yeah. Uh, hello, oh, yes. everybody. Um, thank you for joining the webinar. As Neil introduced, uh, um, I'm name, my name is Yang Yi. Uh, in this uh, webinar, I'm going to talk about uh, this um, advanced environment techniques for free nail lens. Um, in this talk, I'm going to introduce the free nail lens concept and uh, talking about uh, disadvantages of uh, conventional measurement techniques and then introduce uh, Tyler Hobson's uh, measurement techniques for free nail lens. So what, uh, what is free nail lens? It is a kind of optical lens with structure, structured surface. It is composed of a number of concentric zones uh, constructed from its corresponding A sphere. Each groove is an annular piece of the aspheric surface. People are often confused about a Fresnel lens and uh, as uh, spheroid diffract lens. For the aspheroid diffract lens, it is also uh, has a number of uh, concentric zones and uh, constructed from the its corresponding A sphere. Uh, so how to distinguish with them? And what the difference? Uh, the first difference is uh, the underlying surface. For the typical aspheroid diffractive lens, typically it's a spheric sh uh, shape, the underlying surface. Uh, for the free nail lens, it is often just a flat and a line surface. And the key difference, the main difference is the steps. So for the aspheroid diffract lens, it has a small, very tiny steps, typically only a few micrometers. But for the free nail lens, it has a relatively, is quite a large steps. The step height can be up to about several, several hundred micrometers and very easily visible. And also the aspheric lens the steps, it is often a constant uh, uh, height, but for Fresnel lens, it has different type of designs. Um, one type is a constant step height with various pitch. Another one is a constant pitch with various step heights. And the third one is a combination of these two. Uh, for the accuracy, lens accuracy, the aspheroid diffract lens is often higher, better than the Fresnel lens. So if you know these few points, uh, may be easy to uh, distinguish with, uh, uh, with them. Uh, Fresnel lens has a wide range of applications. Its size are uh, different, uh, can be very, from very large to, uh, to very small, from meter to millimeter. Like the uh, lighthouse, used for the lighthouse, and the 
different type of automobile lights, like uh, headlights, traffic lights, and uh, other type of lights, and also used for the camera lenses, um, solar PV in the solar field, uh, for projection televisions, uh, like also magnifier or overhead projectors, and uh, also applications such as optical landing system. For all these different type of applications, mainly we can, can be uh, separate into three different type of applications. One is light collimation, another one is light collection, and uh, magnification. For example, light collection, like the light can be concentrated into a PV cell and uh, or to heat a surface. Magnification, like a magnifier for the book reading aid. So you may wonder why uh, use a Fresnel lens, not uh, use a spheric lens. To use a Fresnel lens has a lot of um, benefits. It can make the optical system is uh, much smaller, more compact, much thinner, and much less weight. And it is often made of glass or plastic. Uh, it can save lots of materials relative to its comparable uh, aspheric lens. Uh, it has uh, improved optical performance or efficiency. For example, in the solar field, its transmitted solar radiation is greatly improved compared to the thick ordinary lens. For the measurement of Fresnel lens is really important because it directly affects optical performance and its efficiency. Compared with a spheric lens, uh, it's not only the form error is uh, measurement is important, but also the geometric parameters like uh, the facet spacing between the zones and the surface slope angle, draft angle or step height and shape or curvature of the top edges or and the pocket. Because this uh, Geometric parameters also affect the optical performance. The measurement is also important. For the Fresnel lens measurement, it's always a challenging topic uh, for the meteorologist. There's, so far, there's no ideal meteorology tool can cover all the um, measurement uh, parameters. For example, use the conventional um, 2D profilometer. It is a 2D measurement as it has a fly, flanking stylus flanking issue. And uh, because the 2D measurement uh, for the centering of the lens is often critical and uh, it's uh, not easy. Uh, stylus, uh, you know, it's uh, um, also normal to the, not normal to the surface. For the setup, it can take a long time, even with a costly fixture. Uh, for the conventional non-contact techniques like a white light interferometer, for the objective lens, there is slope angle limitation. For example, the lower objective lens, five time lens, only can measure a few degrees of slope angle. Uh, even for the higher object lens, like a 50 time lens or 100 time lens, only can measure more than up to 30 degrees for mirror surface. And also for the higher object lens, uh, it has very small field of view, like, uh, like a 100 time lens, only 0.1 millimeter. And very important uh, issue for this uh, measurement range is very tiny. It's often is a sub micrometer or micrometers level for the typical uh, non-contact techniques. So, 
none of them is ideal for uh, measure the complex uh, structure surface of Fresnel lens. The ideal metrology tool should be accurate, reliable, and able to measure the surface form error and able to measure the important geometric parameters. Taylor Hobson put a lot of efforts for developing the measurement techniques uh, for the Fresnel lens. Uh, in Taylor Hobson, we have two different types of techniques for measuring the Fresnel lens. One is non-contact Lufer scan, another one is PJ optics. Lufer scan is mainly used for measuring the surface form. And PGI now covers uh, the 2D form error of Fresnel lens and uh, also can measure uh, geometric parameters because it has better lateral resolution than the Lufa scan. Now I'm going to talk about a uh, uh, Lufa scan. How does Lufa scan measure the Fresnel lens? You probably know Lufa scan we use uh, uh, multi wavelength interferometry technique. Therefore, it has a quite large uh, absolute measurement range uh, millimeters. So this is very beneficial for marrying this uh, um, kind of uh, optical lens with uh, large steps and high aspect, high aspect ratio of steps. But uh, for the standard way for marine atmosphere, use Lufer scan, uh, we collect the surface data uh, from the when the probe, the probe is normal to the surface, follow the design, and uh, does the spiral scan uh, when the sample rotates on the stage. For typical Fresnel lens, it is uh, flat, the underlying surface is flat. So if you use a standard way, the probe should be normal to the flat surface. That means the probe should be vertical. If you do this way, uh, because the slope from the, for the Fresnel lens from center to the edge, the slope is getting steeper and steeper. Um, but the probe has a slope uh, angle limitation. For the standard probe, only a few degrees. So you can, that means that for the most of zones, you cannot uh, get the surface data. Uh, we develop a very intelligent way to use the Lufer scan. The probe, still when the probe moves from center to the edge, moves horizontally. But the probe changes its tilt angle. It moves from one zone to another zone and uh, make sure just ensure the probe to vertical to the optical surface. So as a result, it's able to collect the surface data for each zone. And therefore, it can measure the whole surface form error. Of course, for the shadow area, it's not able to uh, get the data because the light cannot get in. But it doesn't, it doesn't really affect to get a whole surface form error. Um, in addition, this uh, Lufa, we develop a special probe. It is called a Fresnel probe. This Fresnel probe, as you can see from the picture, it is uh, design is different from the standard standard probe. Um, for the standard probe, you know, it's uh, for the Fresnel lens measurements because when the probe moves from the center to the edge, uh, the slope for the Fresnel lens from center to the edge is uh, getting steeper and steeper. That means a probe have to uh, tilt more and more. There is a slope limitation. If tilt more than uh, 45 degrees for standard probe, 
that means this prop is going to crash, uh, hit the touched lens. So in order to increase the surface slope measurement range, uh, we developed a Fresnel probe, like I said here, you can see it looks different from the standard probe. Um, use this probe can avoid the crash when you measure the uh, Fresnel lens. Its uh, maximum slope can increase to be 55 degree. This angle, that means we can cover almost uh, all the different type of Fresnel lenses. For the Lufer scan, we can measure any types of Fresnel design. Uh, three different types of design, constant step high, constant pitch, and mixed type. Because it has a very large absolute measurement range, it can measure step heights up to plus minus 600 micrometer. And uh, for typical Fresnel lens, the underlying surface is flat. Uh, but uh, also there are some Fresnel lenses, uh, the underlying surface may be the spheric or aspheric or even free form. For all the different shape of underlying surfaces, um, Lufa scan has no problems. And in addition, uh, Fresnel lens not only can measure the whole Fresnel lens, also can measure the segmented Fresnels or annular. Fresnel. For the Fresnel lens measurement, before it, uh, you need to type in the design. For the design, we have we separate it into two different parts. One is the uh, underlying surface design. You can type into the main interface. Another one is a diffractive step design. For this, uh, we have we can cover the different uh, different types of Fresnel lens, three different types, type A and type B, and uh, mix the type of A and B. Uh, for the analysis of Fresnel lens. There's two different process. One is remove the underlying surface form. Another one is remove the Fresnel steps. After remove these two different forms, and then you can get the 3D form error of the Fresnel lens. And as you know, the Fresnel lens has a complex high aspect ratio structured surface. So its measurement can be very difficult. Uh, the pitch can be very small and the alignment, oh, sorry. The alignment uh, can be very critical uh, because it's, uh, if the alignment uh, not good, it does affect the measurement results. Um, for some quality, you know, for the Fresnel lens is not good, it's not easy to do the alignment. So we developed a very uh, good feature in the software because alignment assistance. With user alignment assistance, it makes a very complex structure lens alignment is much easier and quicker. Therefore, able to measure the different types and the different levels of Fresnel lenses. It works really well, even for some lenses do not have very good quality. But apart from this, for the analysis, because uh, uh, for the Fresnel lens, is uh, it is a structured surface, and uh, the transition area and the offset or non-uniform pitches, they all affect the analysis results. So the software, uh, we have like the periphery eraser of center and diffractive revisors, different kind of features. This is uh, very helpful. Uh, with using these uh, these features, we can ensure to get a real surface form error. This surface form error, which only calculated 
from the, all the active facet surfaces, um, not including the zone transition errors, and also remove the errors from the offsets. Here is an example. Um, this Fresnel lens has a clear aperture of 42 millimeter. Uh, it's more than 100 zones. It has a constant pitch, 200 micrometer, with various step heights from 1.3 micrometer to 300 micrometers. Maximum slope is really big, is about 55 degree. Here I've got a video I can show you. You can see the prop most it's keep tilting its angle and uh, make sure the prop is normal to the optical surface in each zone. So it still does a spiral scan when the sample rotates. So at the end, it shows the surface form error directly. This is extracted uh, form error. You can see it's a very nice uh, surface form error. And also the measurement, measure the whole surface form error is only takes uh, a few minutes. Depends on data points, you know, it's. Uh, sorry. Here is another type of uh, Fresnel lens. This uh, lens, it has a constant step height. Clear aperture is about 31 millimeter, has a constant step height of 300 micrometer. The maximum slope is uh, 40 de 42 degree. You can see this is uh, raw data uh, from Lufa scan, has a very nice surface form error. Of course, we also compared with uh, PGI memory data. You can see it looks very similar. Um, this is a uh, Type B is a constant pitch, is another sample. It has a clear aperture 32 millimeter, constant width is 300 uh, micrometer. It's more than 100 zones, maximum slope about 42 degree. So again, it's also, you can see, it's very nice raw data and nice surface form error. So also we compared with the PGI results, you can see it looks very similar. Now I'm going to talk about the PGI. So how for the PGI optics, it has better lighter resolution than the Lufus scan. So it is more suitable for marrying the geometric parameters. environments, but, uh, but it can do the user-defined multiple radio chases. Um, for the Fresnel lens, because its uh, steps are relatively quite large and the pitch is relatively quite small, it's, uh, for the stylers, uh, you have to select uh, is quite sharp stylers. It really depends on the Fresnel lens design and the dimension. Uh, we often use the style like the, for example, the 10 degree chisel stylers and the 40 degree diamond stylers to measure the um, number of Fresnel lenses. For the PCI, now we have good progress. Not only can measure geometric parameter, also can do the 2D form error with the help of uh, aspheric analysis utility. This aspheric analysis utility originally developed for the aspheric analysis and aspheral diffractive lens analysis, but now it covers the Fresnel lens analysis. Uh, for the geometric parameters, uh, we use a telemap or telemap contour 
uh, to do the geometric parameters analysis. And the AAU can show a um, few parameters. Here is the aspheric analysis utility. Uh, if you load the raw data collected by PGI optics or only the exported data, maybe from the scan is also is uh, possible. Load the raw data in the software, uh, AU software, it covers two different types now, the current software. One is uh, equal height, same step height with various pitch, and another one is uh, same pitch with various step height, we call equal weights. For the analysis, it's very easy. If you load raw data, just select the Fresnel lens analysis and input the design data. The click the calculate the button. After this, you get uh, the results. This is a 2D form error. And uh, in the meantime, you also have get the diffractive zone parameter results. This is uh, raw data is a constant step height. The 2D form error and the table results shows part of the geometric parameters. Um, again, uh, the anal analysis, like I said uh, uh, before, Fresnel lens, it is a kind of uh, structured surface and has a high aspect ratio. It's quite large steps. And the transition uh, area and some offset and the spikes, they all could affect the results. So in order to get uh, more accurate results, not affected by this kind of factors, the software features, we have some different type of uh, software fe features, like the ignore weights in the software. You can see if you don't use the uh, ignore weights, and then you get this. This is uh, uh, this gives uh, incorrect results. So here is apply ignore weights and spike filter, and gives the precise form error. Also, we have uh, some other features is helpful. Here is exclude from parameter cal calculation. Uh, if you have any spikes or dirt you can exclude the data from the calculation. Um, here is an example in use telemap, which is Teleharpson's another software. In, you can see from here, um, in telemap, it's able to calculate the step heights, the horizontal distance, that means can calculate the pitch and the angles and the curvature if you have enough data. Here is an example use the telecontour also in telemap. Um, it can calculate more details about the geometric parameters. So like the distance, angle, curvatures, no problems for in this software. So, uh, in summary, Lufa scan is non contact techniques. It has a large absolute measurement range uh, with special development uh, for the Fresnel lens measurement techniques. It is able to measure the whole surface form error for the Fresnel lens. It is a really big jump for the Fresnel lens metrology in the world. It is fast. Also, is very fast and accurate. PGI optics. Uh, um, now we also have good progress with the help of uh, AAU software. We can measure the 2D form error, and also it has better light resolution. It is able to measure um, most of the Fresnel lenses geometric parameters, but also of course some kind of Fresnel lens. If it's a pitch too small, 